thank you for that confirmation. for that affirmation for that proclamation that all things are possible if we would only believe let my neighbor let my family member know today that you are God that you hear their prayers that you come to see about them yes God yes God yes God yes God thank you God that even right now Thank you, God. in the back row the child that just walked through the door that they sense possibilities even when it seems impossible thank you God that you know exactly what you're doing we love you, we trust you. Please, Daddy, move me out of the way. I decrease that you might increase. Let the seed of your word not return void, that you might get the glory out of our lives. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Come on, give him some praise because he's up to something. Come on, give him a little bit more because he's up to something. He's up to something. Oh, he's up to something. He's up to. He's up to something. Give God praise for your neighbor if you would. Come on, look at him. Tell him, Blessed March. Blessed March. Thank y'all, choir. Walk with me today. I don't know where I'm going to end up. But it's probably you up there in the balcony that messed up my preaching schedule again. Mark 9, verse 23, King James, Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe. Straightway, Daddy said, Lord, I believe. Ooh, but you got to help thou. Mine unbelief. You pray, you pray, you pray because God lines it up. I need you to be grown today and, and pray over the topic when it's hard to believe. when it's hard to believe. Lean into somebody and say, I'm with you, dog. I'm with you. Sometimes it's hard. If you need to change your seat, change it because somebody faking the funk. Just go somewhere else and, and, and tell them sometimes it, it's hard. Sit down. Hurry up. How do you believe when it's hard to believe? How do you believe when the unbelievable has happened? 
How do you believe when it didn't happen? How do you believe when it shouldn't have happened? How do you believe when it doesn't look like you're going to make it? And how do you believe when they didn't make it? How do you believe when it's hard to believe? How do you believe when the betrayal happens? How do you believe when the sickness happens? How do you believe when the heartache happens? Uh, how do you believe when you don't know what's happening? You got to believe when it's hard to believe because when all hell breaks loose, what you believe is all that really matters. When they die, all what you believe is all that really matters. When it happens, what you believe that is all that really matters. You can believe for a car, you can believe for a house, but when you really got to believe for the real stuff. To believe is to have a firm conviction. To believe is to trust God with all your heart when everything in your life seems to be falling apart. If this ain't going on with you right now, just put it in your, you know, just put it away. It'll cometh your way soon enough. In him, we live and move and we have our being. And baby, you got to believe in him more today then you believed in him in any day of your life. Somebody ought to give God a shout of praise because it's time to believe. What do you do when the unbelievable happens? Can I go on and hurry up? This text, this boy and his daddy going to help us understand how to believe when it's hard to believe. Y'all remember how it started, Peter, James, and John. They were up at Mount Transfiguration. Jesus is transfigured before their eyes. Jesus got on his white robe. It's glistening, whiter than anyone could bleach it. Uh, and there appeared unto him Elijah with Moses. They were talking to Jesus. The disciples' minds were blown, daughter. Moses was dead, but now here go Mo up on the Mount of Transfiguration. He didn't get in. Y'all ain't hearing me. Even if you don't get in, God says, I still have a presence moment for you. Uh, Elijah and Moses are there, and then all of a sudden there was a cloud that appeared that covered them and a voice from heaven came and said this is my son I love him this is him transfiguration it got so good to him that Peter said rabbi we don't need to come down from here let's build a tabernacle let's build some shelters one for you one for Mo one for Elijah I don't even have to have a cover I just want to be in the presence I just want to see y'all working this thing out can you imagine basking in the glory of God in such a way that the Savior shows up and manifests himself y'all don't hear me have you ever had an encounter when you knew it was God. If you haven't, stay tuned. God said, I got more for you than a Sunday morning service. God says, I want to show up in your bedroom. I want the angelic host to sit on the end of your bed and pull you up. Y'all, y'all ain't hear me. I, I want the presence of God to be so thick in this house and in your house that devils can't remain in your house because God's presence is so thick because unholiness can't dwell in his presence. I wish I had somebody in here who would give God a shout like you want him to show up in there. No, no, no. Y'all still applauding like God is a ballerina. I need God to show up and throw his weight around. I, I need for the healing power of God to come up in the house. I, I need for God to come and run up and down every rope. You don't need another church service as you, you are. You need God to show up and throw his weight around. Come on, come on. Show me that you want him. Show him.
I know, I know. It's cool. It's cool. Now, if, if you're going to believe when it's hard to believe, some of y'all scared to give him praise. You don't want to get caught up in this euphoric experience and all of this emotionalism. You too smart for that. Let a Negro tell you who thought he was too smart for that. You may be on the mountain now. You may be on your high horse now. But just wait a while. Tell your neighbor, just wait a while. Wait a while. If you're going to believe when it's hard to believe, you've got to understand and expect that you're going to go through valleys that make it hard to believe. The text highlights the reality that life is full of peaks and valleys. That life happens, stuff happens, people change, Negroes trip, there's a shift. Folks used to say, baby, you can be up today and down tomorrow. I've learned you can be up today and down today. It don't take a 24-hour period of time. Saints, let your pastor tell you the truth. Just because you saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, and have been at church every Sunday this year, it does not exempt you from going through some hell. Y'all don't have... Hey, yeah, see, some of y'all like, that, that ain't new news. That ain't new news. Well, why you act like it's new news? Why are you surprised when you find yourself going through stuff and have the nerve to say to God, I could see if I was as bad as I used to be. <laughs> I could see if I wasn't tithing it now. I could see if I stopped cheating for the last six months. I, I could see, I could see if I wasn't a preacher or a teacher. But 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 who told you that you're supposed to go through life without some breakthrough hell? Who told you you ain't supposed to experience hardships? Who told you that dementia wouldn't touch your door? Who told you that you wouldn't have to take care of your parents? Who told you? I mean, you wouldn't even know that a mountain was a mountain if you ain't been through no valley hell. You don't even know you got a good man till you compare him to the last bad one. It's relative. There's some valleys that are right around the corner. But that doesn't mean that you live your life with this conservative fear that keeps you paranoid and looking over your shoulder for the next valley. You don't have to be surprised when the valley comes, but you don't have to be a chicken waiting for the valley to appear. I don't do that. I don't do that. That's why some of y'all don't want to get too high. You don't want to even let yourself enjoy the moment. I don't know. I don't know. I'm really afraid to really enjoy it. I'm really afraid to get high because you know the devil busy. You don't know when something going to jump off. So you won't even get out the boat because you're afraid to drive. You won't even get out of that 
job from hell because you are afraid because you're so busy trying to keep security that you forget it's God who's your source and you sitting there trying to hold on to something nasty that's beating the hell out of you because you're scared to walk on water. Jesus saying, I, I bid you to come but you're afraid to step out because you're busy looking at the waves. tell my children, I say, you're going to get your heart hurt if you really love. I would tell them, say, look here, look here. If daddy can tell you anything, if you get your heart hurt, forgive quick and stop trying to fly an inch off the ground. You flying an inch off the ground because you scared to skin your knee. But there's no real transparency and intimacy in your relationship if you don't open yourself up enough to go through a valley experience. So you got surface relationships and you can have a bunch of those and none of them add up to what God has for you because you're afraid to risk. So you're afraid to trust God and God says, I can't give you what I have planned for you, plan to prosper you and not to harm you because you're scared of a little valley experience. Well, baby, God says, let me help you. You'll be up this month and down next month. You'll be up the next year and down the next year. But if you trust me, <laughs> hello, Mr. Saved and Sanctified. You ain't exempt from the valley. But here's what the Bible says Yea, though I walk. Through the valley of the shadow of death. How fear no evil. For thou art with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Now, see, that ain't for the dead at the funeral. They can't hear it. It's for the living who are going through a season that makes you feel like you're going to die. Is there anybody here who will tell the truth from the back to the front, from the front to the back, that you've gone through some seasons and some valleys? You might be in one right now. I dare you to quit acting all prissy and pretending and give God a shout in the middle of the valley if you're ready to come through the valley of the shadow of death. I dare you to... Tell somebody, you got to go through the valley. Come on, tell them they don't want to hear it. I don't even like him preaching like this on a first Sunday, but tell them you got to go through the valley. There are lessons in the valley. There's stuff to be taught in the valley. There's ministry in the valley. There's mess to be messed with in the valley. Is there anybody who knows you're in the valley, but you're coming up out of that thing? You need to give God some glory that the valley don't last always. It is hard to believe when you're in the valley because the devil will make you feel like a hypocrite giving God glory and in the natural ain't nothing to give God glory for. You will believe when it's hard, even in the valley, when you remember that the enemy employs chaos, confusion, and division in the valley. Hmm. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, eep, I will fear no evil. Because as surely as God is in the valley, the enemy is in the valley, and there's kingdom warfare, and the kingdom of God is on the inside of you, and the enemy is wrestling to see who you're going to serve in the midst of the hell. 
While you're crying, are you going to serve God or are you going to serve your tears? When you realize that you can cry, you sow in tears, but God promised that you're going to reap in joy, you got to make up your mind that when the enemy comes in like a flood, you've got to believe that the Spirit of the Lord is going to lift up a standard again. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'd have had about five people put up their Baptist finger because they don't want to hear this. It don't make no difference. The valley will meet you after the benediction. The valley will be at home when you get there. And if you don't know how to believe God when you're going through the midst of it, when you knock the door open and the devil says, how you doing? I've been waiting for you to come back home. I missed it, you. God does some of his best work in the valley. And Satan takes some of his best shots in the valley. Check it out. Three of them jokers on the mount. They come down with Jesus. They come down to the valley. And nine of these jokers are at the bottom of the hill arguing. Disciples arguing, teachers of the law arguing, daddy standing in the middle, refereeing, arguing. You will believe when it's hard, when you remember that the enemy's job is to sow confusion and division to give you a double consciousness about whether God is for you or against you in the valley. Because we go by our feelings instead of walking by faith. If it don't feel good, we don't feel like God is with us. God's not hearing me. I can't. And the enemy just comes at you, gets in the recesses of your mind, and puts negative jokers around you. If God is not the author of confusion, that means that the devil is the author of confusion. Y'all need to hear me real good. Uh, uh, the, he's the father of lies. He's the accuser of the brethren. He, the devil is the designer of division. And the reason the devil is the designer of division, because he understands what Jesus says, even if we don't know Jesus' words. Jesus said that a house divided, a kingdom divided, cannot stand. So the enemy knows that if he can get in between you and her, them and them, if he can get in the middle, if he can start some garbage, if he can keep some stuff stirred up, he knows that he can take your attention. Because if somebody moves and goes behind that purple curtain, 25 of y'all look Look over to the left to see who's moving because we got uh, adult ADHD. We cannot keep our focus on what's going on. The devil ain't even got to do much, but if the devil starts talking trash, we can't even see what's going on. But God says, if I could get two of y'all to agree as touching anything on earth, you ask, it will be done by my Father who is in heaven. So the enemy will get us talking trash to one another so he can make Mess us up. What caused quarrels and fights among you, James says? Isn't it because you want what you want, but you don't get it? You have a desire for something, but you don't get what you have? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Have you ever noticed why hell always breaks loose around the funeral? Jokers are arguing over a cubic zirconian pendant that don't cost but five dollars, but mama wanted me to have it. Can't even bury them with dignity. Because the Negro who ain't never been there is the one who want to fall off in the casket. Now, y'all know, know I got jokes. Stuff goes on in my head. And sometimes when they're, no, no, I want to go. No, go. I just want to go, boop. I have touched him on the back. Hey, 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 you didn't mean it, did you? Stop, quit acting a fool. I'm sorry.
I'm going to take my time. Y'all watched Chris last night. Y'all can hang out with me. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for thou art with me. Even though I don't feel like you're with me. You in the valley with me. It's hard for me to believe that you're here because I'm in the valley. It's hard for me to believe that you're with me going through this for how could a God who loves me let me go through this? But if you're going to believe even in the heart space, you got to learn to refocus on the God of your salvation while you're waiting on God to do some saving. The Bible says that when the people saw Jesus, they ran to him. Often when we're going through hell, we run from him. I never seen more folk who ain't working that hard take sabbatical. When you're going through stuff, you can't afford to run from him. When you're going through stuff, you got to refocus on him. Because the enemy is talking in this ear, and the enemy is using them to talk in this ear. And the enemy will use the person closest to you to tell you, we're going through so much stuff, Job's wife. You need to just curse God and die. Because if God was really God, we wouldn't be going through some of the stuff we're going through. But you got to understand, it's then when you got to try to find God in the fiery furnace. You got to seek after God. You got to go after God. You got to go after his presence. You can come to church, but if you don't get his presence, you just got a personality. And this personality cannot deliver you. You got to have his presence and carry his glory back with you. Because when you get home, that crazy child that you birthed is still going to be there in your basement, eating your cornflakes and your chips. And you got to get discernment from God as to what to do and keep your peace in the process. You got to fix your eye on Jesus who's the author and the finisher of your faith because your child won't take their medication you got to learn in the courtroom to say I will bless the Lord at all time his praise shall continually be in my mouth you got to learn after the second miscarriage to say, mm, God, I'm mad about this. You know I'm angry about this, but I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I'm tired of all this sniper fire, but you said in your word that you are my refuge and strength. So because you're my refuge and strength, I'm going to focus on that, and I will bless the Lord at all times. Your praise shall continually be in my mouth. Some of y'all don't like to do that because it feels like you're ignoring it. No, Notice Jesus does not mess around and say, I ain't claiming that. I ain't claiming that. Jesus sees what it is because you got to name it in order to exercise it I don't know where you get that fake stuff I ain't claiming that I understand what you're saying you're not receiving this sickness unto death but at the same time you ought to be able to get your strategy put it up on the wall let me see the MRI some of y'all are scared to go to counseling let me help you Jesus sent the counselor counseling is good sometimes though you got to get somebody who looks like you who believes like you so you don't have to teach them during the counseling process, but in the multitude of counsel is safety. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to be gone in a minute, though, Queen. I'm going to be gone in a minute. The crowd ran, and Jesus asked the question in verse 16, uh, what in the world are y'all jokers arguing about? The daddy came up, verse 17, said, me, me, me. I brought my son to be healed by your disciples. But they couldn't do it. I brought my sick son to new faith. 
to be healed with your white robe preaching self, your multiple deacons, and a whole army full of ministers. But they couldn't do it. They were so busy having church, waiting for their time to preach, getting their check for volunteering that there was not enough power in the house. There was so much division and they were arguing over ignorant stuff. Would you sing your part? Would you get out my business? Would you leave my man alone? He ain't your man if he's sharing. I'm sorry, that ain't on my notes. But you need to get to a place that God says, I can't. He says, I brought him to him. But they could not do anything with it. And you need to understand, he says, I'm telling y'all what's happening. He robs him of his speech. He throws him in the fire. My son is going through stuff. He keep going to jail, getting out of jail, going to jail, getting out of jail. I told you my child was suicidal. But you were too busy and didn't call back within 24 hours because you think this is just a job. So you tick because they got your solo. And you ain't anointed enough to run a devil out of here anyway. How many folk you think are disillusioned? Because they come to churches all over the country with jokers acting holy and acting powerful and ain't got no power. Do you know why you have power struggles in church? Because there's an overdose of impotence. I don't like pastor so-and-so. Pastor so-and-so don't like me because we scared of recycling some church folk. I want some gangster ex-drug addicts, ex-pole dancing, ex-crazy folk who have been, I, I want some doctors who have been bankrupt and understand you can have it all, but then you can lose it all. I want some folk who then came from the guttermost to the uttermost, who ain't afraid to give their real testimony instead of a test of lie and say, if God brought me out of some hell, he can bring you out of some hell. I got the church on some gas fumes, and if God can bless me, I know that God, do I have any folk in it? Where the real joke is at? Are there any real folk? that done been through some grief who can say I'm good today but I wasn't that good yesterday do I have any folks Jesus said in verse 19 oh unbelieving generation he said how long am I going to have to be with you we always talking about the, the now generation the new generation they buy products of us how you going to talk about them? Jesus said the whole generation is whack because we busy having church and we think new faith is better than Trinity or better than victory. Ain't nobody busting a grape because until I see signs and wonders and miracles and God resting in a place and you can speak to one another without looking at each other crazy. Well, I didn't want to be no preacher. Like, no, no, no. See, some of these jokers want to be preachers. I'll be like, go on in. I ain't mad at nobody. Raymond. Jesus said, bring the boy to me. Look at somebody and say, bring him to me. <laughs> Look at y'all. Y'all tripping. I ain't saying that. I don't know. I don't want no demon possessed nigga coming under me, foaming at the mic. No. No, no. You listen to me streaming, you go to another church, you mad at somebody at your church in Alabama, let me help you. If you want signs, you want wonders, you want miracles. You want God to rest in a place? You want people to get delivered? You and I must be stewards of cultivating an atmosphere for miracles. 
If someone comes to church and you to Sadiddy to speak to them and you hurt them again, they can't see God because you busy being important because you impotent. When you come to church, this ain't American Idol. This, this ain't the time for you to get your preach on, get your teach on, your time to shine. Every time you do that, we see flesh all over you, and everybody's looking at you like, when you're going to get done, you praying for 50 years, and we told you for four minutes. But you important and you got something to say. And as a result, folk can't get their word because you being disobedient, drawing discord, and mad if somebody check you. That's why you can't go to the next level because can't nobody check you. And all we're trying to do is protect the environment so that somebody with cancer doesn't leave the same way they came when they came to church. So as a result, our personalities get in the way of power. Do you know what your job is? To usher somebody into the presence of God. My job ain't to preach a good sermon. My job is for you to have an encounter with God. Praise leader, your job is to usher people into the presence of God. Once they get in the presence of God, get your behind out the way. Usher, you got to be nice at the door. Usher people to their seat. Once they have their seat, get out of the way. What sense does it make to usher them to a seat? You sit down and say, sit right here. want to be a preacher after I was saved for about two minutes I want to be a Christian because I kept running into stupid old people who didn't have power but had a lot to say when jokers talk a whole lot and want you to see what their knowledge base is they just like the teachers of the law they can talk about it but they can't perform it because if they could perform it, they wouldn't be full of pride. Our job is to save new believers from jokers who act like they believe, but don't believe in nothing but themselves. Jesus, would you bring him to me? Let me help y'all. We, some of y'all, we done just got back to church good. Some of y'all still sit in the same place. But when you want to see God, sometimes you got to learn how to reposition. When you want to see God, sometimes it's an external and an internal reposition. Some folks switch churches, but they don't switch kingdom inside. So you take the same funk from New Prospect and bring it to New Faith, and you wonder why they treat you the same. You the same! I trip. Because sometimes... I wonder, I know I ain't all at the bag of chips. So I be trying to figure out how my spiritual children think they all at the bag of chips. I trip when people walk heavy. Well, I'm going to get them told, and you just need to understand. How you going to talk to them any different than I do, and I'm the chief under shepherd? So folk in the pew bleeding, they in meetings bleeding because
because you got low self-esteem and you want nothing at home, but now you want to come to church and be somebody because you got a couple of alphabets and still don't believe you are who you are. If you know who you are, you can be nice and you can save people from the wolves who are in sheep clothing, who go to church. Everybody in here ought to be 911 folk who save people who need God from people who think they God. I'm going to go on to the crib because he said, bring, a, bring him to me. Jesus doesn't ignore anything. That's us. We're anointed for avoidance. That's why your relationship is falling apart and y'all are pretending that ain't nothing happening. Because you're afraid to name the stank that's there. It morphs. He said, bring him to me. How long has he been this way? Since childhood. You mean he's been going to this this long? Yes. You know, I can believe God for one church service. It's more challenging to believe him for a bunch of month of Sundays. I can stand believing God for a short season. But when God doesn't do a suddenly... I start buckling. I know no none of y'all buckle. But every once in a while, old Rebby Reb be like, what the hey? <laughs> I mean, I mean, I've been doing this thing for a while here. Yeah, I've been working for you, working hard for you, Jesus. Don't, 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 so hard for you, Jesus. Don't, 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 working hard for you, Jesus. Why don't you just treat me right? I know I'm acting stupid today, but I'm feeling all right today. <laughs> you got to learn how to persevere while Jesus is processing you. We want to get to the end without going through the process. But Jesus does crazy stuff. Like, why don't, you're like, Jesus, why don't you just heal me? Why are you asking questions that you already know? How long has he been like this? You know the end from the beginning. You're the alpha and the omega, and you're asking me questions, and I'm trying to figure out, why don't you just do what I need for you to do? Yeah. Hurry up! Yeah. Some of you, the reason you've been going through this so long is because you haven't yielded to the faith formation process yet. There's stuff you're going through. you screaming, I'm going to another level. You don't go to another level without facing another level of devils. You don't go to your next mountaintop without going through a valley and experiencing stuff that makes you want to die. And Jesus says, you're going to be in the valley as long as I need you to be in the valley. So I'm going to ask you questions like, how long you been going through this? Tell me what's been happening. It throws him in the fire. It drives him crazy. I'm trying to figure out, God, I don't know. I don't understand. And I went to your people, but they couldn't do anything. Dick, sometimes I do not like Jesus' methods of ministry. How long 
Has he been like this? Bring the boy to me. He's been here a long time, Jesus. God says, but you got to learn that it's not going to always be a name and a claim and quick it and fix it theology. That's good for marketing. But that ain't good for life and it ain't real ministry. Sometimes you go through stuff for an extended period of time so that when you get through with that thing, God says you come out like pure gold. He says perseverance must do its perfect work. You got to learn how to stand. And after you've done all that you can do to stand, you got to stand. You got to learn how to press towards the mark of the high calling of God. And when it takes too long, you got to believe the word that it says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. You got to get to a place that you say to God, though you slay me, yet will I trust you. If it don't happen, I'm going to stay there. If it take, you don't understand. He says, if you can do anything, Jesus, have pity on us. I know Jesus is from the hood. She's like, if I can, player, you don't know who you're talking to. All things are possible for them that believe. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. God says you're going through some stuff. You don't see how God is going to do it. But God says all things are possible. That heartbreak. All things are possible. That season of grief. When you're grieving, you say stuff like, I'll never be able to again. And then God says, oh, yes, you will. Because all things are possible. I'll never trust again. Oh, yes, you will. Because all things are possible for them that believe. I'll never try it again. Oh, yes, you will. I ain't going to make a whole lot of noise today. I just wanted to marinate. Somebody has sold us a, some wooden nickels. Make us think that just because we say you ain't going to go through no hell. If you ain't going to go through no hell on earth, why does the kingdom suffer the violence? And the gates of hell cannot prevail against the kingdom of God. You ain't going to get what God has from you chilling, sitting in a white robe in the choir with a shawl on in the front. Some stuff you got to go get it. Here's the deal. I got my teachers on the front. Give God praise for my teachers. They just graduated. And because you know the Bible, you understand that devils know who Jesus is. And they're afraid of Jesus. As soon as Jesus saw the boy, the enemy started messing with the boy. Because even if we don't recognize when Jesus is in the place, demons know that Jesus is in the place. Demons just know that most of us don't know that Jesus is in the space. Because if we did, we'd do what Jesus does. Jesus commanded, come out of him. And don't you go back into him. 
Do you understand you have the power and the authority? These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. Do you understand that you don't have to put up with what you're putting up with if you would only believe when it's hard to believe? When it's hard to believe, you need to get some oil and put it on your child's pillow and in the name of Jesus, believe that that habit is going to be broken. In the name of Jesus, you need to just put a little oil in your boss's desk. Let them slip on something every once in a while and understand that you can command in the name of Jesus and it has to flee and it has to be done with and do I have anybody in here in the balcony who believes that whatever you bind on earth shall be bound I dare you to protect the atmosphere for miracles I dare you to be nice to one another. When you come into church, when you're in the parking lot, when someone cuts you off, when you got to wait on the way, how you gonna get out of here and cuss in the parking lot? Cut, ma, ma. Speak to people when you come. Speak to folk in the store. You're starting their healing process to believe, speak to somebody you wasn't speaking to. Because if God can transform you and you nice as hellish as you've been, if you're like, I'm coming to Jesus because of you being nice, I know. I'm, I'm gonna I'm go on, it's 11.28. No, 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 you must be Pentecostal too. keep asking God. I said, God, where are the signs and wonders? He said, when they love the Lord of the signs and wonders, then they can handle the signs and wonders. He said, because I did signs and wonders and gave the disciples authority over demons. And when they found themselves in a valley, they couldn't bust a grape. He says, so not even signs and wonders are going to make people believe. They got to believe that I am that I am. And then what I bring, I will present. When we get to a place where we don't mind having more than 300 people on prayer on Tuesday night, you ain't even got to do nothing but be in the car. And put it on mute. So that you can learn how to pray by listening to others pray. You believe in mentorship on the job, why you can't believe in mentorship in the kingdom? I'm done. Stand to your feet, please. Mm. Stretch across the room and touch somebody's shoulder. You don't have to know what's going on in their life, but I want you to quietly begin to thank God for their deliverance. Just tell God, thank you, thank you, thank you. Come on over and over again. Tell him thank you. God, I know they believe, but help their unbelief. I believe, but help my unbelief. Help me believe that if we touch and agree on this row, that a miracle is happening on this row right now. I believe, help my unbelief. Help me believe, God, in the name of Jesus, that the broken hearted is being made whole right now in the name of Jesus. That they've told nobody about the diagnosis. But in the name of Jesus, when they go back to the doctor, in Jesus' name, that the doctor will say, I don't understand. But they'll be able to testify, I understand. I, I was at church at 1130 on Sunday morning, and we touched and agreed across the aisle. And in the name of Jesus, I felt virtue flow through my neighbor and through my body. In, in the name of Jesus, I'm standing in a gap for my child. 
they shall not return to prison they shall get out of prison miraculously in the name of Jesus my household will be made whole God I touch and agree that any person on my road who is not saved that they will receive you today any person on my road that does not have a church home they will receive you today I thank you in the name of Jesus that they'll receive a peace that passes all understanding we come against a worrying spirit thank you God that you're guarding their hearts and their minds in the name of Jesus let it be so Daddy, we believe it. Help our unbelief. 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 Bless them all the way at the other end of the sanctuary. Bless them through the streaming in the name of Jesus as they touch their phone, as they touch their tablet. In the name of Jesus, God, thank you that they will not commit suicide. In the name of Jesus, thank you, God. They'll lift up their heads. No more spirit of depression. We believe it. We receive it. We decree it, that settles it, in Jesus' name. Now give God some praise. Just three people around him, tell him thank you. Ask him, are you saved? Come on, ask him, do you belong to this church? Come on, if you're not sure you're saved, come on. Come on, all the way in the balcony, if that was for you. Come on. Daddy say, I know it's hard, but I got you. Come on, son. Come on, daughter. Come on.